Hey everyone, Jack here. So if you follow Glide, my company on LinkedIn or anywhere else indeed, you'll have hopefully seen today that we launched workflows, like a major new aspect of Glide that we've been working on for a long time. And uh, we did, I had the great pleasure of working on a big motion launch for this big uh, sort of launch video, as well as all these educational videos, which are now coming out as well that the team are working on. So uh, I wanted to walk through just some of the stuff that went into this because it was just a really meaty, fun motion design project. And like it used all of the kind of the skills and like tools that I've been working on recently, After Effects, Cavalry, Cinema 4D, and even some sound design in Ableton. So I wanted in this video to give my motion design friends like an overview of all of this, but I'm not gonna dive in or teach you anything like that because so many people know a lot of this stuff, but I just think it's really interesting to share the kind of like the stuff goes that goes on behind the scenes of these projects. Um, Cause I think we should do more, more of it. My friend M. Seti, Taylor, who was on my podcast recently does this a lot and it's always great when he does it. So um, yeah, if you have more questions about what you see here today, let me know. Uh, but I just wanted to walk through the process because I wish I'd seen the behind the scenes of videos like this when I was starting out in motion. Um, so uh, yeah, this is a big launch video, which means that we spend a lot of time on sort of prepping it. So we were thinking about the structure of it, we did some uh, research, we went into a lot of design, uh, and then I did a week full on sort of motion design on this. Um, but the basic process, the first process I would say, look, I got all my tools up here for you guys, was actually research. So if you go to my website, jackvaughan.com, uh, and you go to the experiments page, by the way, I'm redoing my website soon, which is very exciting. You can see that there's some early workflows motion research, which is like very 3D. We were playing with this, all these different techniques here. I actually worked with Carl Hamrick on uh, some stuff in AE for like ribbons and stuff like that. But we actually ended up leaving that sort of design uh, realm somewhere like in the past, um, put it on the shelf. I'm trying to find the right phrasing here. And we went to uh, a different way. Um, so after we kind of locked what we wanted to say in the areas of the product that we wanted to talk about, um, Tom Parks, uh, digital designer Glide um, uh, and brand, uh, we went into Figma and he, he kind of laid this out. I kind of did wireframes and animatics and stuff like that. You can see storyboard ideas and like draft early stuff going on here. Um, but um, this is where we ended up, right? This is the kind of visual language here showing triggers, loops, nested conditions, and AI. And actually this was done by me later, so it was never even designed. Um, so that's the first stage, so Figma. So then we go to After Effects, which is where we basically start laying everything out. And actually in my, let me get the, let me get the animatic up for you. So my first step, and I'd highly recommend this if you're like, if you're making a project early on, and I actually did a, a video about this on like a script that I have for speeding up the animatic process. I basically just exported all of those designs that we kind of semi-finalized. And you can see here, these are just PNGs, but I'm mapping it to the music. So just like making sure that I know what my timings are. And I played that to the team and everyone was like, this is great. Let's go. And that's kind of the really important moment where you get like by, like lock, you get agreement from your team. They say, this is going to look good, go and do it. Um, so animatic stage is so important. Um, and then the next stage was, uh, again, yeah, like blocking it out and doing all the individual UI animations in After Effects. Because there are kind of like, um, there, are th there are three visual elements here, right? There's the, the normal sort of, abstracted UI, screencast UI kind of stuff, which I can do all in After Effects. And I'm very, very, uh, very experienced. I know I do that all the time, right? Text, things like that. But then you saw this other stuff here, which is like this new vector illustration style that Tom and I were working on. And that went straight to Cavalry as well. And then we ended up doing this, um, this 3D switch at the end. So Tom designed this and I was like, hey, look, we can do we can do a fun 3D thing here. So there were th three of my favorite tools, After Effects, Cavalry, and Cinema in here. But um, if I just jump to the, l the last version and I just reduce everything and zoom out a bit, you can see that there's uh, just a lot of pre-comps here. So it, because I'd done the animatic and everything was blocked out, I just knew what I needed to do. I just took it sort of, uh, whatever it was, like four bars or a bar at a time uh, with the track, and I just went in and animated that thing. So each one of these scenes can be quite detailed. This is a, a nice scene where I used um, uh, a great uh, tool by Plugin Boutique, I think it is, um, Bezier Node. It's a really, really cool um, plugin, which I really like just for creating certain animations. And that goes into the webhook sequence, right? And that's just a pre-comp there um, that sits on top of that. So all of this stuff is pretty self-explanatory. If you've worked with After Effects, this makes sense. These are just blurred shape layers zipping down. You've got 
some arrows turning around there. This is all basic animation stuff, but it's when you get to this sort of thing, I was like, ha, right, how do I do this? And I'm just getting into Cavalry at the moment, uh, an amazing motion design tool. Um, if you haven't, if you follow my podcast, I interviewed Ian, the the founder, one of the founders of Cavalry. Um, and this is where you can really just like make amazing stuff that would take you hours and days. It's kind of like, I like to think of it kind of like Cavalry is like quantum computing and After Effects is like normal computing. Um, so where are we here? So, here we go. So, so basically the way that this is working and if I'm not gonna explain this from the ground up because uh, you know, a lot of the people who follow me on here are, are cavalry users, uh, and I'm still a beginner here. But <clears throat> what we've got is just like a simple ellipse shape. How do I solo stuff in cavalry? I'm still so new to it, but um, like, here we go. Yeah, like a, an ellipse shape like that inside of uh, a duplicator, which is something if you use 3D software, you'll, you'll be used to, but is, uh, is very lacking in After Effects. You have to get like external plugins to do things like this. The one that I use for After Effects is React. Um, which is just really difficult to use. I mean, it's very well done. Kudos to the developer who did it for After Effects, but After Effects is just chuggy for this sort of stuff, but it's just so easy. So just to um, show you what's going on here, like with this side of the ellipse, what we've got, if we go to the duplicator, is we just got this ability to be like, how many how many circles do we want? How many times do you want to duplicate it? You know, how big is the the actual shape itself and lots and lots of other things. Um, and then you use basically uh, these things called behaviors on certain properties. So if we go to this duplicator here, uh, actually, if we go to the original shape itself and we go to the stroke, you can see here that the stroke width is being driven by a behavior, which is the oscillator, right? So this oscillator is what's creating that stroke width change. And then you also then use another behavior called the stagger to kind of stagger when that's happening in time and that that ultimately creates this wave effect and there are other ones as well here like um uh this this one here is actually like if i go to this comp you'll recognize this from the video uh this is just this kind of like another another duplicated thing with masks on top of it so this is how i put together the kind of the four animations for that section and then the final bit, which I was really pleased with, um, I said to Tom, I want to do 3D. And Tom was like, no, let's keep it in, in this zone. And I was like, no, 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 I really, really want to do it. Um, but it just needed to be pared down was um, this 3D button that you see at the end, which is the final kind of switch on. Um, originally, this was light mode, but actually we made it dark mode in the end just to kind of tone it down a bit. Uh, otherwise, it was too much. But the basic idea is this is totally, by the way, if you don't follow... Ben Fry C on YouTube. This was totally a kind of like, um, uh, this is a hilarious video he uploaded, which is 10 hours of knob, <laughs> which is just this switch in a very, in a style which he he, he is very known for, um, of this switch turning on and off, which is really, really fun. Anyway, if you listen to this one, you'll really kind of recognize the inspiration that I had for this sound design at the end of this video, which is just literally just, you know, totally inspired by this video. I was like, that's so satisfying. I want the end of our video to have that kind of feeling. So I did a kind of slightly derivative style switch that switches on, glows, uh, and then sort of really ramps up towards the end. And then we lock on that uh, and cut to that, the empty kind of outline glide logo, which we, we've never really done before actually. Um, so yeah, let me just show you this if I just roughly I zoom around this is like a full 3d scene uh could have done stuff like that i don't know uh it could be fun it's a bit overtly 3d but um yeah i love working in cinema so those are those are all the elements uh, and then the final thing uh which i'd encourage you to just listen to because i find it really interesting is ableton so we're using a stock music track on this it's brilliant epidemic sound is like a really great platform for finding actually non-cheesy uh stock music but I really wanted to hit some sound effects points uh, and um, in the motion to really sort of um, bring home some of the animations and also to actually just beef up the track. And I've done this a, a bunch of times at Glide on big launch videos. It's like you get a stock music track and it's good and everyone's like, this is the right one. But you're like, yeah, but like <clears throat> it could be so much more. And I've done music production in the past uh, and composition. So it's fairly easy for me to jump in and like enhance it. All you do is you basically get the original track, which is this one here. Um, I'm not sure how much you'll be able to hear through my, my microphone there, but that's the basic track. You'll hear it on the thing. And then if I, if I mute the track, you can hear some of the sound design that's behind it. Um, uh, 
but like as i said the um and this was particularly important for the end bit where you have that final switch off if you're really interested in that you can go to again my website uh workflows and then here there's actually just an sfx only one so this is a, a little overview of it all if there's anything here that you want to like know more about i'm starting to do more teaching more courses on motion i'm starting to kind of coach and help younger motion designers so please reach out to me and let me know if you need if you want to if you want to do any of that or you want to or you just want me to do a video on something more here because i'm doing videos on linkedin all the time but um yeah uh, I would love to see any projects that you've done. I think that we should all be doing this more as motion designers, like sharing what goes on inside because the only thing that really gets shared these days for most motion designers, I think is, is the output. And there's so much genius work going on inside of our project files. I'm not saying that this was genius, but like I know there's genius work out there with the people who I follow and I would love to see more of it. So um, there you go, that's my overview. Hope it was interesting. Cheers.